everybody, and welcome to this month's episode of Princess Auto See at Work, the show where you get to see our product live in action. My name is Matt, and this is Derek, and on today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the Taz brand chipper shredder and the string trimmer. For all of our first time viewers here, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to add them in our comment section. And if you do, you can be entered for a prize. Today's prize, we are actually going to be giving away one chipper shredder and a string trimmer. So good luck to everybody out there. And we'd also like to say thanks to our Taz vendor for supp supplying us today with this great product. We're really looking forward to seeing what we can do with this. So Derek? Yeah. What do we got here? Well, we're going to start off with the chipper today, Matt. So this guy is uh, 212 cc. It's about seven horsepower. Um, it'll take up to a three inch branch, um, leaf litter and up to one inch branches on the top. Um, it's got a lot of nice features, a removable bag to uh, take and distribute the mulch. Um, no flat tires to run over land, really easy to transport and uh, just a, a, a nice little machine. So if you've got a yard to clean up like we've got back here, um, this will take uh, this in short order and take care of it. Should be able to take care of all of this here? Absolutely, yeah. All right, well, it looks like we have a lot to get through we here. We do, yeah. So maybe should we uh, test it out a bit sure, and see how it goes? Shot. Absolutely. All right, yeah. but always first, safety. Safety first. So right before we start, I'll just mention that um, like you know, any small engine, you're gonna have a choke lever uh, throttle lever on off switch um, and a fuel switch typically so the fuel switch is already turned on that's right down here we've got our on off switch to the side here throttle lever and the choke lever all right so we're going to get going here all we'll right. do some leaf litter to start sounds good i'm okay. excited we'll get ready here let's shred okay stand on it here It'll take a minute to slow down. It's got a weighted flywheel in it, obviously, to, to keep the momentum going. Uh, so it takes a little bit to slow down, typically, uh, you know, versus another small engine. And uh, yeah, I mean, that just pull that right in and chop it up. So easy peasy. Uh, we'll get to some uh, branches a little bit larger here in a minute. That's, uh, I gotta say, that thing uh, hammered through pretty quickly there. Absolutely. So before we go any further, we're gonna take some questions here and try to answer, answer them for everybody out there. Sure. We have a question here from Perry. Uh, he's asking, is there in a height adjustment to our string trimmer? The string trimmer, no. So basically it's gonna be a manual adjustment. Um, the cutting range is gonna be anywhere from uh, just over uh, off the deck. So maybe about a quarter of an inch to about three inches. And that way, uh, if you tilt it back too much farther, it's not gonna be an even cut. So you're within that range. So it's, it's um, you know, if you don't wanna go right down to ground level, you still have a little bit of scrub left. Yep. Woo. That wind is picking up. It's picking up. Uh, Rick Harper has a question for us. Sure. Does the chipper shredder come with an electric start? It does not. So it's a pull start. Um, it's it's easy pull. Uh, most of these engines are, uh, you know, uh, once, maybe twice if you have to. Okay. Um, so not an option currently, but, uh, you know, maybe in the future. For sure. Yeah. That makes sense. We have another question here from Stephen Lawton. Yeah. He's asking, how long does it last on one tank of gas? One tank of gas, I, I would assume for the liter size here, you're probably looking at probably four to six hours, I would imagine. Okay, that's yeah. a pretty good run then. Yeah, I would imagine that. Yeah, we have another question here from Stuart Stevenson. Uh, he is asking, uh, is it mixed gas or straight? It's straight, it's a four cycle engine, both of these are, so they're gonna take straight gas. And uh, I'd just like to mention, as all small engines I always would, is uh, stabilized premium gas. So easiest thing to do is take a jerry can full of premium fuel, the highest octane you can get, and uh, stabilize that gas. Then you don't have to worry about stabilizing small amounts for smaller gas tanks. Okay, yeah. that sounds great. What about uh, general engine maintenance? What kind of engine maintenance would someone need for a machine like this? I mean, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, like any small engine, uh, I'd say a seasonal oil change. Now, if you're going to be using it a lot, you've got a lot of property and a lot of chipping or trimming that you're doing, um, you might consider maybe, you know, semi-seasonal. Uh, but if you do it either in the fall or in the spring and you're ready to go for the season uh, that's following, um, 
other than the oil change, uh, maybe clean the air filter, check the, the quality of that. Um, you know, you're doing uh, some uh, dusty, dirty work here, so make sure that's uh, free flowing. Uh, maybe once a year, check the spark plug, clean it, check the gap. And um, really on the, the engine side, that's really all you need to do. There's a little bit more maintenance on this guy, about every 25 hours recommended from the manufacturer that you uh, inspect the hammers, the, the cutting edges that are gonna be doing the work down there and uh, they do have uh, triangular shaped and j-shaped now the j-shaped ones can be flipped but the triangular ones they have three sides to them and uh, they can be turned three different directions before they have to be either replaced or sharpened well oh, that sounds good and what about assembly on these units what is it like to assemble them pretty straightforward i mean as it sits out uh, out of the box you're going to get the main unit um, you have to put the hopper on the handle here the kickstand on the front the two wheels and the uh, chipper chute and of course the bag is uh, just mounted off to the side here. Um, nice note to the bag, it's, um, it's a quick release. So uh, you have a handle on the back here, it's a little hard to see, but it just kind of clocks off to be able to remove it. There's where your chipping agent's gonna come out. Oh, very nice. Yep, so you put it on there, get it lined up, lock it down, and then when you're ready to pull it off, you just pull the handle out and hold onto this. Zipper on this end, uh, a little bit of a counterbalance strap there, and then you can distribute the mulch if you want to do a path or put around some uh, landscaping or around some trees to hold the moisture in. Wow, yeah. a lot of possibilities with Absolutely. this unit. For sure. That's great. Yeah. We got another question here from uh, Tom Clark. Yeah. Uh, does the chipper have a shear pin if a rock or whatever were to accidentally fall in? It's possible, no, it's possible that you could get something lodged in there if you do put something or try to force something in. Um, I've seen in the past some people will try and put large branches down the top hopper. Again, half inch diameter down here is about as large as you want to put in. Um, if it does get dislodged or something does get lodged in there, um, obviously make sure the engine is off, everything's shut down, and then you'd have to disassemble to take a, a peek at it. Um, just be cautious when you're doing that because there's obviously sharp edges and whatnot in there, but it, it has happened in the past. You just have to be careful what you put in. For sure, yeah. makes sense. So we have a few questions coming in from uh, a few people out here asking about the parts for the unit. Sure. Can, are parts available to buy or can you buy a replacement bag if need be? Yep, we can order all that stuff for you. Yeah, you can call us at the, the uh, call center or at uh, any of the stores and we can take care of that for you. Uh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, we got another question here from Gail and Todd Hat asking, what is the biggest size limb that you can put in this? So through the uh, chipping chute here, it's going to be three inch max, it says right here on the top. Um, the, the, the chute is designed for that size, so you wouldn't be able to get anything larger in there. And uh, you just don't want to, you know, overwork the machine for what it's rated at. But um, I mean, typically, you know, in a three inch size, we're having, you know, probably something like this. We're going to chip that in a minute. And uh, as long as it goes down the chute, it'll be able to take it. That's basically the premise to work with. And that's great. Yeah. For all of you just tuning in, we are reviewing right now the Tazbrand 212cc chipper shredder. If you do have any questions on the unit, please put them in our comment section and we will do our best to get to them. And you'll be entered for a prize. You could potentially win one of these chipper shredders or the string trimmers here. So we'll go through a few more questions here before we uh, maybe test it out again. Sure. Um, do you have to use a bagger for this unit, asks Kathy Jones. Technically, no. It is recommended for the manufacturer to keep the bag in place. Um, it's just that if you don't have the bag in place, there's a possibility because the speed and the weight of the flywheels traveling down there and the cutting heads that uh, something could come out and cause injury, right? So we always want to make sure we're standing away from, um, you know, the, the working end of it if we can. And uh, eye protection, ear protection, gloves, uh, just to make sure that, uh, you know, something doesn't come out and, you know, do some damage. That sounds good. Yep. Uh, Brian Power is asking, what's the warranty on these uh, units here? Technically, uh, it'd be one year through the, uh, through the stores, but uh, if there's anything else, like at Princess Auto, we always do what we can for you. If it's uh, after the, the, the one year uh, you know, uh, time period, we'll see what we can do and replacement parts, uh, assist with repair. Yeah, whatever we can do for you. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, Maureen Liz is asking, what safety feature, features are on the chipper? Safety features, well, if it does jam, it, it, it typically will stall. Um, and then of course you've got a uh, rubber flap in here. I'll see if I can pull it up. So you've got here, that's over the top for the leaf hopper. Now, of course, when we're gonna be doing the chipping, mm -hmm. there's a gate here to shut anything from coming out of the chipping chamber uh, uh, nice. to, to kind of blow back in your face. We're gonna close that. And uh, then you wouldn't be able to put obviously anything down in from the top. Um, that's gonna keep any debris coming out from there. That sounds good. Uh, ben is asking, will it chip half inch dry oak? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yep. Good information there, Ben. The the better, yep. Exactly. All right. Um, looking for some of our engines. Do we, uh, do we know what the chips or mulch will look like at the end? Uh, yeah, let's here. Let's uh, pull the bag open here. All right. And we'll see what we can see. 
There's a little bit of leaf litter in here, but you've got some small, oh, you know, small bits and pieces. So that's very some bark fine. in there. So that's going to be really good for holding in moisture. Uh, like I say, around some landscaping project or some maybe some young trees or even some mature trees just to keep them moist. I know it's been really dry here in the better part of Canada for the summer. So uh, whatever we can do to keep the water around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would it work to shred straw? Don Mann is asking. I don't see why not. Yeah, Absolutely. it yeah. seems to go into the hopper. It should shred it up. Yeah, for sure. Again, anybody who's just tuning in right now, we are taking questions on the chipper shredder. If you have any questions, please add them to our comments section and you will be entered for a prize and you could potentially win a chipper shredder or a string trimmer. Yeah. Well, I think we are ready to uh, test this out again. Yeah. What do you think, Derek? Yeah, we'll close the uh, the uh, shoot here and we'll uh, see about chipping a limb. All right. That sounds great. And remember, yep. safety first. Safety first. All right. Yeah. Well, I got to say, that was pretty impressive. That yeah. was a big stick. There. That was a big limb. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So that usually must have been three inches there for yep. the size of that. Yeah, shoot. it was kind of tight in the hopper, so that makes sense. Yeah, very impressive on that unit. Yeah. All right, thanks again, everybody, tuning in. We are talking about the Taz brand 212cc chipper shredder, and we are also here to talk about our 150cc string trimmer. So why don't we talk about that one for a little sure. bit, Derek? Yeah, absolutely. So out of the box, this is really simple uh, to put together. Uh, basically, it is all installed. Um, the handle is folded down, so we've got some adjustment knobs on either side here. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a nice uh, engagement system here to lock into place. So if you're a tall guy, shorter person, you can adjust them up or down. And if you want to store it or take it somewhere, if you have to take it into a vehicle like a van or uh, a truck maybe with a tonneau cover, you can fold the handles right back down. And then when you get to where you're going, fold them back up and you're ready to go. Yeah, hey, that's pretty easy. Yeah. So we uh, have some few questions here on this unit. Yeah. Uh, Cody is asking, is it a walk behind tripper? Uh, the the walk behind trimmer. Mm -hmm. Is there an option for a solid blade, or is it just a string trimmer line only? String on this model. Uh, no solid blade available. We do have uh, in the box. You will get two sets of the trimmer strings, and we do have available. Uh, I believe it's 24 pack of replacement blades. The string diameter is uh, a 155, so it's really heavy, um, and you'll be able to take down. We're going to be going out to the back field there in a few minutes and uh, you'll see it works like a charm. Excellent. Yep. That is great to hear. Uh, do the wheels have bearings or is it just plastic on the axles? There is a flange bearing on the wheel, uh, a sealed flange bearing uh, riding on the axle so it does have some support there. Um, a little bit of lubrication, kind of the maintenance other than the standard engine maintenance that we talked about on the uh, on the chipper. Um, you'd go and uh, lubricate the jack shaft and the uh, axle itself uh, maybe every uh, you know, I think 10 to 15 hours, something like that. Uh, it's all in the uh, in the manual, very simple. Other than that, it's basic engine maintenance, air filter, uh, oil change, and check the plug, um, just to keep it fresh every season. Oh, that's pretty great. And uh, sorry, what's the cutting diameter on this unit again? It's a 22 inch radius, okay. and uh, yeah, anywhere between, uh, of a height uh, between uh, zero and uh, three inches, approximately. Okay, yep. and uh, this engine compared to the other one, is this uh, need the gas oil mix or is nope, it a straight? It, it's a four stroke as well. Perfect. Yep, you're 150 cc, so you're just over four horsepower. Um, and yeah, premium fuel, stabilized as well. Um, put some stabilizer in the jerry can and keep that topped up. Um, and that way, if you happen to have it parked over a season, the best quality fuel you could put in it with stabilizer is going to keep it fresh till the next season. 
No, that sounds great. Yep. Uh, we have another question here from Maureen. How long do these strings last about? Well, typically, I mean, if you're going into just kind of, uh, you know, vegetation, um, mm -hmm. they're going to last quite a while. Now, if you do happen to get against a rock or uh, maybe a, a, a tree that's a little bit sizable, um, they're going to wear down pretty fast. So you want to be cautious. Uh, you know, if you're not sure where you're trimming, take a quick walk through, make sure there's no scrap metal or anything laying out there. If you're clearing some property that you maybe just bought and you want to clean it up a little bit. Um, but uh, realistically, I mean, they're, they're heavy nylon, so they're going to last quite a while. That sounds great. Again, anybody just tuning in, we are taking questions on both the chipper shredder and the string trimmer. If you have questions, please add them to the comment section. We will do our best to answer them and you will get entered for a prize with, for your chance to win either the chipper shredder or the string trimmer. Well, Derek, we've talked a lot about the string trimmer, but yeah. I think it's time to see it in action. Sure. What do you think? That sounds good. All right, yeah. let's take it over here and yeah. see what we can do We're with gonna this. We're going to walk over here and see what we can do. Got some high grass? Yeah, we've got some field over here. All right, perfect. Yeah, so it's really nice. 14-inch um, tires, uh, solid tires. They'll never go flat. They roll really well over land, so for this kind of application, really nice. It definitely moves smooth. It does, and it's really light too, so for transporting, if you have to move from one end of the yard to another or take it somewhere, you want to take it out to the lake, cut the ditch, uh, it's perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So I think we're going to work in here to start. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Uh... All right. So put on some eye protection here. This one's Absolutely. actually quite quiet, so we don't necessarily need ear protection. But if you're doing a, a big job, you might want that. So they're pretty basic here. Just an on-off switch. There's a fuel primer bulb on the uh, on the left side of it. We're going to give that a few pushes, as indicated. And then we're going to come over here and give her a pull. Got some. Headphones for you. Thank you, sir. All right. And here we go. Hey, yeah. units seem to be working pretty Works well there. Yeah, <laughs> I would say so. So yeah. after watching you use it, I have a few more questions uh, sure. coming up. Absolutely. Is, is this unit self-propelled? It's not self-propelled, but it's really light. So moving it around is, is a dream. It, it, it's, uh, it moves almost on its own, but not on its own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that that is sense. fair. And uh, what would you say is the weight on this unit? Pretty we, easy to yeah, move I think Yeah, I think it's somewhere in the range of about the uh, mid 30 pound range. So it's very light, very, oh, yeah. very portable. Yeah. It definitely sees, uh, makes sense on there. And uh, how about the gas tank on this? How long do you think you could run this unit before you need to refill it? It's a little bit smaller tank. I'd say you'd probably be into probably a couple hours, I would imagine. Oh, yep. yeah, that seems like a decent amount too. Yeah. Anybody just tuning in, we are talking about the string trimmer from our Taz brand. If you do have questions, please add them to the comments. Comments. We would love to get to them and you can get entered for a prize. Maybe you can even win one of these string Absolutely. trimmers. That'd be pretty nice. Yeah. And uh, we have a question here from Anna Carr. She is asking about the noise level on this string trimmer. Right. What, what, how loud is it? I don't have a decibel rating off the top of my head. It's quite quiet. It would be on par with most lawnmowers. So, um, you know, you hear them fire up at uh, eight o'clock on a Sunday morning, right? <laughs> for sure. As, they, as the neighbors are apt to do. Um, but it's it's a lot quieter, but again, it's not spinning um, uh, a weighted flywheel or anything, so it's it's going to be a little bit quieter than uh, than a chipper shredder. But yeah, I'd say it's on par with most lawnmowers. It's it's quite quiet actually. That sounds good. Yeah. We have another question here from Northern Chris. He's asking, is the trimmer belt driven or chain driven? There's a belt. It's yeah, a belt it's a drive. drive. Oh, all right, great. And uh, we got another one here from James Schwartz uh, with the Taz string trimmer. Can you use it on commercial? For commercial use or is it meant for strictly residential uh, absolutely both applications both application yep, works for sure hey that's yep. a win right there um, and uh, we have another good question here from edward what's keeping the nose of the trimmer up keeping the nose of the trimmer up? well there is a kind of a standoff on the bottom of the head so if you do happen to rest it down i'm just kind of bouncing it like that right it's not going to dig down into the ground right so it's the uh, the cutting action is actually just above that uh, that stop so mm -hmm. yeah you, uh, you can cut very, very close to the deck, but you're not going to be digging into the ground. 
All right, that sounds great. And uh, we have another question from Greg. How thick is the trimmer line on these again? Uh, 155. And we yep. sell replacements at we Princess do. Auto, yep. We have a package of, I believe, 24. And uh, so it'll keep it going for quite a while. Not a bad idea to have. If you do have the unit, you live, obviously, you're probably not going to be uh, you know, downtown somewhere using this. So if you're out in the country and you're uh, a distance away, keep some. They're kind of a consumable part. So something to keep in mind. That's great. Yeah. Well, I got to say, Derek, uh, it's an impressive unit. And you did an impressive job here, but yeah. uh, I mean, this is some pretty low grass. I think we got to see you actually put it to the works, huh? Sure. Let's so, uh, uh, head out into the field. Yeah, I got this field over here that could yeah. use some trimming. How All about right. you uh, get in sure. there and see well, what we'll, it can do? We'll move over there. Awesome. And we'll get ready to set it up again. Quick start. All right. Up there, turn it on. Wow, Derek, that's a that's a pretty good job here. Absolutely. You did absolutely very impressed. Very impressed. Yeah, I might uh, have to get you to finish the rest of this field here. Well, I think we were told we had to clear out by the trees by the time we're out here today. Yeah, so, our yeah. own personal CFL football Ex field, exactly. perhaps. Yep. Hey, I like it. Yep. I like it. Well, I think we can uh, take some more time to uh, maybe answer a few more questions on this sure. unit. For all the people who are just tuning in, we are talking about the Taz brand uh, chipper shredder and the string trimmer here. And uh, if you have any questions, please add them to our comment section. We'll do our best to get to them. But if you ask a question, we will enter you in to win a prize. And what prize could you win? Well, it could be a string trimmer or it could be our chipper shredder. You don't know, but it doesn't hurt to ask. So please ask us those questions. Yeah. So, some of the other questions that we have uh, coming in here. Uh, Steve Lawton asks a very good question here. Is it dangerous to anyone or anything nearby? Will objects fly off or could it break a window or scratch a car or a tractor? Well, anything that's rotating and moving at high speed under, uh, under power could indeed. Um, that's why we're wearing our protection. And I mean, obviously if you've got uh, pets or children or uh, anything that might be uh, delicate around, you might want to uh, either protect them uh, uh, just asking, you know, tell them to stay away or Absolutely. especially if you're going to be down, um, you know, if you're near some vehicles, there's a good chance that uh, something might fly out a rock, a piece of uh, a tree or something like that or some branches. So by all means, um, you know, take the precautions. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah safety is always important. Uh, Rick Harper also asked, is there only one throttle speed for this unit? Yes. Yep. So it is running. It is ready to go. Um, as soon as it's engaged, you're off to the races. So um, you know, there's some pretty heavy vegetation here and it was slowed down just a little bit, but it was cutting through that uh, quite quickly. So, um, you know, you need to have that high speed to be able to, if you're in a light amount of grass, it's going to chew through it quickly. But when mm -hmm. you get into the deep stuff here, yeah, you need to have it as high as possible. And how about with wet grass? Does it work with wet grass well, as well? Actually reasonably damp. We've had a lot of rain here over the last couple days uh, and even over overnight. Um, the grass is, is quite wet once you get down to the, to the base. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was chewing it through pretty quick. Excellent. Yeah. We uh, have another question here from Tara. Would this be good for edging a garden? You could. Um, there's not a lot of control in that respect. I mean, the edging you'd have to be a little bit more cautious of, but uh, if you did have some landscaping stones or something like that that you were running up against, yeah, you can you can get a defined cut with it, right? Because it is a very specific radius. So yeah, by all means, uh, you just take a little bit of practice. For sure. Yeah. I got a great question here that I personally love from Spencer Owens. What is the benefit of using this string trimmer, say over a traditional lawnmower? Well, the lawnmower is, uh, you know, you have your, your height uh, adjustment that you can make. It is fixed. Um, lawnmowers in this situation will bog down quite easily, right? And in most cases, probably stall. Uh, they'll jam up. Whereas this is dispersing the product out. Lawnmowers are going to keep it within the deck. 
Um, so when you're working with you know ditches or fields or any kind of open property like this, this is where this kind of product is going to shine versus a push mower. Excellent. Yep. We've uh, had a few questions coming in about people asking us to show the uh, adjustment of the uh, the wheel height or the the handles on this unit. Yeah, for sure. So we just loosen these guys off here. Like I say, Matt and I are both pretty tall, but if you're uh, you know, a little vertically challenged perhaps. Let's get it. So the jaws will open up and we'll just drop it down. So if you had somebody who was, you know, or if you're in an odd angle, right, the properties maybe is a little bit of a higher grade. Like here we had to go over a little bit of a bump. So you can adjust it as you, as you need to as you go along. Tighten yeah. everything back up. It's got a nice crossbar here to keep everything nice and tight and structure. Tighten that up and then away you go. Excellent. Yep. Uh, we have a few other questions coming in for maybe some of our uh, viewers who came in a little bit late. Right. What is the cutting dimensions on this unit? Cutting dimension is 22 inch radius on this guy. All right, yep. that's pretty great. And uh, we got another question here. Uh, after you're done with the tripper, or the trimmer, sorry, can you throw the cut brush into the chipper to bag it? Absolutely. Yep. Really? For That'll sure. work. Yep. Rake hey. it up and toss her in and you got some mulch. Yep. Use whatever you can. That is great to hear. Uh, got another question here. Um, do, will this string break if it is hit by a rock by accident? Yeah, there's a possibility. I mean, you come across an object, like I say, a rock, uh, scrap steel, a piece of, uh, you know, fencing or something you've got there. There's always an opportunity for that nylon to break. It's spinning at a high RPM and it's got a lot of force behind it. That's why I would always suggest keeping some consumables. Oh, that yeah. is great. Um, also, too, we had some people uh, asking us because they saw us uh, adjusting the handles for height. Mm -hmm. How does it look when you uh, break it down for storage purposes? Sure. yeah. We'll fold it up. Easy again, just loosen them off. Make sure you've got a nice gap in between the jaws. There's very, very sharp, defined teeth on them, so that's good positive locking there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just so like nothing. Put it in the back of a vehicle, into a van, a truck, what have you. Like I say, under a tonneau cover. It should fit under most tonneau covers with ease and uh, take it wherever you need it. That is great. Yeah. Now, when we talked about the chipper shredder, we also talked about the maintenance required for the engine right. and the unit. Yeah. What about the maintenance for this unit, both the engine and the machine itself? Yeah. Well, maintenance for this, there's not a lot to it other than the engine. Um, so, you know, your basic small engine maintenance. But yeah. what they do suggest is um, lubrication on the axle and on the jack shaft. So the jack shaft is going to be, you know, the rotating assembly uh, axle almost inside. Okay. Um, and that's about, uh, if I recall correctly, somewhere in about 25 hours, 15 to 25 hours. Mm -hmm. And it's light lubrication, so it doesn't need anything really specialized. Um, and then just cleaning, right? Making sure if you've been into some wet material, um, you know, give it some compressed air or give it a quick wash and uh, make sure it's nice and dry before you put it away. Um, just to keep it uh, lasting as long as you possibly could. That works as well. Yep. All right. Should we uh, give it a go again, maybe? Sure. See, yeah. see how we can Let's go? fire see. into that again, absolutely. Get some more of this field going, please, yep. for anybody coming in. If you have any questions, please add them into our comments, and we'll get them right after we're done seeing Derek work on this trimmer here. That unit just cuts like a knife. Doesn't stop. That's quite impressive. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, take a few more questions now before we uh, wrap things up. And uh, we have a few questions here also regarding our chipper shredder as well. Sure. So if we want to mention that, um, does the chipper have reversible blades? Rod is curious. Absolutely. Yeah. There's triangular and there's J-shaped. So the triangular blades have three sides, so they can be adjusted to the uh, sharpest edge. Okay. And the J's can be flipped. Excellent. Yep. That's great. And uh, Trevor Arthur Doctor is asking, is it a two-stroke or a four-stroke engine on both of these units? Both these units are four-stroke. So they come with engine oil in the box. All we have to do is add some uh, fresh premium gasoline and some stabilizer in it, and you're off to the races. Hey, that's great. Yep. Um, Rod is also asking, does the chipper come with a garden tractor tow bar? It does. There is an option available for it, but it Ooh. does not. Or, sorry, it does not. Uh, there is an option available for that, um, but it does not come with it. 
Hey, that's fair enough. Uh, Tara is asking, do you need to keep the front of the trimmer off the ground or does it glide? It kind of glides, like as you can see here, it's kind of bouncing off the nose of it. So, I mean, ideally you'd want to keep a little bit of, of you know, depending on how high you want to keep the vegetation, um, but uh, you could, you know, kind of move along the ground like hey, so. That yep. works well. All right, we also got uh, another question here from Ivy, very important. Yep. Can this be purchased online and have it shipped? Absolutely, yep. Oh, that's it's great. Purchased and shipped online or in the store. That is great to hear. I know a lot of our customers are gonna really appreciate that. Right. Yeah. Um, we got another question here from Susan. Should the chipper shredder be cleaned, say if you used wet leaves to be mulched? Yeah, if you can get, uh, you know, leave the hopper open and, uh, or compressed air works really well to kind of speed it up uh, so you don't have to leave it out uh, for any length of time. But absolutely, I'd suggest, you know, uh, it's very tempting to, you know, finish your job and kind of pack it away in the shed and, and walk away till the next time. But uh, a little bit of maintenance, cleaning, uh, just a little bit of aftercare goes a long way. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, and uh, we have another question here from Kathleen. How thick of the branches will the tripper take? The trimmer? The, the, the chipper shredder, the chipper. sorry. So the branches that go into the hopper with the leaves, maximum diameter would be half an inch by about 18 inches long or so. Um, okay. A little bit longer, wouldn't hurt. Uh, the maximum diameter for the actual chipping chute is three inches. So if it will fit down that chute, it will accept it. Yeah. That sounds good. Yep. All right, everybody. I think that's all we have time for today. I would like to thank you all very much for joining us today while talking about the Taz brand chipper shredder and our string trimmer. We do have our winners for our two draws and I would like to say congratulations to Ben, to Taryn on our winner for the chipper shredder and Rick Harper for being the winner of our string trimmer. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ben and Rick, and thank you for tuning in. We would also like to thank our vendor, Taz, for giving us these amazing products to be able to test out and give out today. And last but not least, we'd also like to thank Dave and Eleanor Simpson for bringing us over to this wonderful uh, property here to be able to test it out. I know they're gonna be incredibly happy to see Derek get out in this field and trim the rest of this stuff for them. Yeah. So once again, everybody, thank you for joining us today on Princess Auto See It Work, and we're excited to see you next time. Take care now.